All right, this is Emma Dowd uh, back again to talk about proteome discoverer analysis and visualization. So Dr. Mosley gave a really great overview in the Sequest HT talk about um, what we use Proteome software for. And Proteome Discover is just the, the workflow uh, pathway analysis software that we pay to use uh, that we use very commonly in the course. So there's a lot of different options. But again, the reason you have software is to get from the raw data to some scored peptides and proteins that you can give output to your customers. So I'm going to just re-show you these slides. I'm going to bring this up again and again because the next few lectures are actually about different sorts of software that you can either use to do the data analysis itself or to just visualize the data or some combination thereof. So again, you can, you can reference Dr. Mosley's lecture on FASTA databases, some places to get sequences of proteins, the different search engines, including Sequest, which is what we use here most of the time, and the different platform platforms and integrated pipelines. And you might note that some of this is vendor specific. So Proteome Discoverer is provided by Thermo Fisher and has an entire support and development team. So there's regularly regular updates happening. Um, and a lot of academic researchers actually provide plugins where you can use their their tools in Proteome Discover because it's such a common tool to be using. You can see that others are, uh, Progenesis is a Waters product, Protein Pilot is an AB SciX. These are all manufacturers of different mass spectrometers. So their raw data formats, if you listen to that lecture, are going to be very different. And so they provide different um, software that, which you can purchase. <laughs> it's, it's mostly not free. Some of, some, there are some free options such as MaxQuant. So I'm also going to send you this, a link to Ben Orsburn, who is a, a great guy in the field of proteomics. He has a, a really entertaining blog, but he has a bunch of Vimeo tutorials on Proteome Discover. If you ever want to see an entire walkthrough on anything specific, he explains things really well. So I'll just link to that as an additional um, something to study. So data analysis and visualization. So data analysis and Proteome Discoverer. This is the, the screen when you open up Proteome Discoverer. And some of the key information here is you have content manu management as well as configuration. So content management is where you set some global settings that may be applied to multiple different projects. So FASTA files, this is where you would upload a FASTA file. And Proteome Discoverer is um, makes the database that is then searched by whichever search engine you select in your workflow. Um, things like spectral libraries, if you're doing a DIA experiment, you can upload your spectral library here. Any specific chemical modifications, it comes with many modifications already set in, in the uh, administration rights, but you can also check uh, Unimod for any specific modifications, or if you're doing some unusual chemical modification, you can add it into this section. Cleavage reagents, if you're using some non-traditional digestive enzyme, you may need to double check that it's listed and described well here. And quantification methods, so that's if you're using a specific labeling technique. For example, in our, our TMT tandem mass tag labeling, uh, we actually get a specification sheet for each lot of reagent that we use and we can add in the quantification method a specific, a lot specific isobaric um, you know, abundance uh, in, in the method. So you can apply that when you're Correct. doing the quantification. Correction. Correction, yes, thank you, that was the word I was looking for. And another, uh, set, some other settings are in the settings and node uh, portion here. I mentioned that some academic researchers make what are called nodes available, and I'll kind of give you a, a little visual of how that looks. But essentially, if you're opening up Proteome Discoverer for the first time, you would essentially go file, new experiment, and you can add your files or fractions depending on what sort of mass spec technique you had done. Um, and then you'll see in the workflow, you'll have a consensus workflow and a processing workflow. So I'm going to talk about the processing workflows first. And so essentially a processing workflow is just the data uh, from the spec 
from the from the mass spec, uh, processing it into some sort of peaks format that can be searched by your database search of choice, some sort of FDR validation, which of which there are a number, and potentially PTM or targeted site analysis if you want to do further levels of validation of site specific modifications. So this is this is a very simple, straightforward workflow as an example, where you have your spectrum files, your spectrum selector, Sequest HT, which is the node for your search engine, which uh, Dr. Mosley discussed in that lecture, and Percolator as a, a PSM FDR validation tool. So there are a number of different options, and you can see these, what they're called workflow nodes on the left. So different ways for your data input, different ways to add in what's called feature detection and quantification. So if you're doing reporter ions, uh, you can have a reporter ions quantifier node added in. You can also use this menorah feature detector, which is looking at what's called um, look, look, adding in potentially retention time or precursor information. Uh, and that's important if you're doing precursor quantification and not reporter ion quantification. Uh, you can add in some spectrum processing nodes. Uh, they, th these are just different ways of manipulating the mass spectrum data prior to searching. Um, and then you have your different sequence databases. So in our, here, here you can see Sequest HT, which is what we often use, Mascot, which is another common, and MS Fragger, which is a, an exceptionally fast search database. Uh, you can do a spectral library search if you're doing a DIA experiment. And the different PSM validation um, nodes from Percolator, which is works well if you have many different, uh, a, a large number of PSMs in your experiment or a really complicated sample. It can use some machine learning algorithms to appropriately apply false discovery rates to your, um, your search engine results. Uh, for less complex samples, though, you might need to use fixed value PSM vali validator or target decoy PSM validator, which use mostly the uh, scoring cutoffs from the database search and, and can't apply a larger, um, larger algorithm. For PTM site specific analysis, so you have an imp PTM RS node, which is specifically trying to look for those. Um, diagnostic ions that will give you specific localization of, for example, a phosphorylation. Uh, and so you need, to, you need to have fragments around the site of interest to properly identify that modification. So then the consensus workflow is a level above the processing workflow. And so you can imagine that you could potentially have multiple processing workflows for multiple different sorts of experiments, and then some flavor of consensus step, which is what's going to give you your final output. And so you can see in your consensus step, you have different um, ways of analyzing, grouping your input from the processing workflow. And it also gives you these different um, ways of filtering your peptide and protein output uh, and providing final grouping. Uh, we will often use reporter ions quantification. And it's nice that we also can include these different protein annotation, um, looking at different, uh, it can start to assign some of the, the Go annotations even in this, in this software uh, before you get to, to separate processing. So it can get really complicated really fast, but this is what a basic workflow at the consensus level looks like so that then you get your final um, protein peptide groups. For visualization, this is also really important and why there's still a lot of development around various softwares. And so you'll see this as a common theme in some of the software that I bring up. Um, data visualization is obviously really important to you as someone who may, isn't running the mass spec. You need to be able to understand what the output of the different search and false discovery rate uh, algorithms are, are telling you. So, I will say that you can download Proteome Discover as a viewer, and it's a little bit more of a complex um, system than what we'll talk about Scaffold and Scaffold PTM as other data visualization options later. But I will walk you through it, and just so you can see how rich uh, and in-depth you can go into data visualization just using Proteome Discover. 
And so just in your results view, as, as expected, you have a proteins group, uh, a proteins tab, a protein group tab, peptide groups, PSM, M's, quant spectra, specialized traces. And then these tabs will be dependent on the sort of experiment you're running and the sort of output you're looking for. Um, Dr. Mosley talked a little bit about proteins versus protein groups. So if you have some splice variants things, and, and proteins that cannot be um, separated by your bottom-up data, they, they will be in a protein group as opposed to uh, individual proteins. And that's just to remove, um, otherwise you could have a, a list of 50 different splicing isoform variants where you see one peptide that doesn't determine which one of them is, is present in your sample. So then you have peptide groups, which you can pull down from each protein. You can look at the number of specific peptides and the number of specific PSMs or peptide spectral matches. Uh, there's just so many ways to visualize this data. These are all of the tabs that are available. Um, you can look at different um, pathway protein groups and search by different pathway protein groups. And you can even select this table and format it to drag around what you're viewing in this window. And so what we will do is we'll export this as an Excel sheet, um, but there could be different things not present. So here you can see it, both the gene symbol and the accession, which is the protein uniprot identification. Uh, and some people might really be interested in, in the gene symbol. Some people are more interested in the accession number. Um, these are just different visualiz visualization options of the same data. So for example, you can filter, you can, uh, using this, this filter option, looking for a specific protein of interest. I just chose this one at, at random. So if you set a filter, you can pull up the protein. Um, you can see its abundance values, its abundance ratio. There were nine peptides identified. If you double click on this protein, you can see the coverage, of the sequence coverage of the protein. Um, and then if you checked this and went through these different groups, you can, could see the associated peptide groups, PSM and spectra, uh, involved in identifying this protein. Uh, there's also visualization tools, including scatter plots, histograms, bar charts, pie charts, Venn diagrams, all of these different ways of looking at all of the different data in all of these tables. So it's pretty um, in, endless in terms of the number of graphs and charts you could make if you wanted to. So I'm just going to cover some of the ones that we will provide you as an example. Um, we will generally provide this proteins abundance ratios log two. Sorry, log two of the abundance ratios. And here we can see just a, an infected versus null uh, abundance ratio. Um, and we take the log two of it so that you can center it around zero. And you can, you, you would, in most experiments, you will see this centered around zero, almost bell-shaped curve. But you could imagine that in specific knockouts or others, uh, other experiments, perhaps this is shifted so that all sorts of proteins are more decreased in, in one sample compared to wild, wild type, for example. So it can give you some good high level view of what's happening in a, in a quantitative analysis. We'll also provide a volcano plot, and the volcano plot shows you the log two ratio, so that was the histogram in the previous um, slide, uh, uh, graphed versus negative log 10 of the p-value. So negative log 10 of the p-value, you wanna take only significant values, so less than 0 0.05, and you take negative log 10 just so you can create this um, positive y graph, uh, and here we just have the cutoff of, uh, of this line here. Everything above it has a significant p-value, and we can give you this list, the list of all proteins identified, but everything above a significant p-value has, could potentially be looked at as changing and of interest in your system. Then, for example, you could double click on any, any dot of interest, all of these little dots are individual proteins that have been quantified, and you can view the data here. And so it's very easy for me to pull up in Proteome Discover, for example, the, the quant channel associated with every single sample and how it was averaged to get um, abundance, an abundance ratio that is not significantly changing in this case. I just chose this 
dot right here, you can see that because of these uh, somewhat large error bars for TMT labeling, at least, uh, these, these two are not significantly different. Um, but then you can also look at each sample level. And I just, I chose it because it wasn't significantly changing um, because I don't wanna um, share any, any lab specific data. So then we can export that all to you and provide this exact same chart with um, a session description gene level uh, as an Excel, a cell, Excel sheet for you to further analyze in StringDB or David, different um, gene ontology search engines. 